everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going over all the books that I read in January uh, and what I rated them. So when I rate books, I use, try to use a 10 star rating instead of a 5 star rating because I, I know that Goodreads has a 5 star and I do put ratings on Goodreads. But I, when I uh, rate them, I like to have a little bit more leeway about the scores that I would give them. Uh, when I start a book, I try to start out at kind of like middle of the road, like I don't have any expectations one way or another and then based on things that happen in the book I either like it more or I like it less but I try to give kind of give the the benefit of the doubt so I read 26 books in January uh, most of them were good and some of them were were really amazing and there weren't any that I thought were horrible so I had one book this month that was 10 stars three that were 9.5 stars one that was nine stars two that were 8.5 stars three that were eight stars five that were 7.5 stars, five that were seven stars, one that was a 6.5 star, two that were six star, and three that were five star. I read six physical books, nine ebooks, and ten audiobooks. Uh, highlights for January, um, I read Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. This is possibly my new favorite book of all time, although it is in competition with a Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. And I know that these books could not be more different. Like we have 19th century French literature and um, astrophysics. But how could you choose between those two? Right, the, the second book that I wanted to highlight was called A Monster Like Me. This was an audio book that I listened to. I thought it was really cute. And uh, the characters were great. And it was a great story. It's about a girl who has... I guess they call it a blood tumor. A hemangioma, which is like a, it's a, it's, it's like a red, big red spot on her face as she calls it her monster mark. She carries a big book of monsters around and thinks she's a monster and sees monsters everywhere. And um, it was just really cute. It came to a nice conclusion. Um, I thought it had great therapeutic value. So this book has the most therapeutic value that I think I read this month. Uh, the next one I want to highlight is called Snow Glass Apples. It's by Neil Gaiman. The illustrator was Colleen Doran. It was a really uh, beautifully illustrated book and it was a great story too. Uh, the only thing that I was a little upset about is that I found out I had already read it. Uh, not with the illustrations, but it was in a book called By Blood We Live, which was just a compilation of some short stories. So I, that was a little disappointing, but other than that, I thought it was great. Uh, next was The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. Uh, I enjoyed this book a lot. It didn't have much of a plot, but I kind of knew that going into it. But what I got from this book, I found like my favorite quote that I for what I read this month. And I know my thing's a little crinkly because I didn't tape it down. So, uh, the more you learn, the more you realize how little you know. Still, the struggle itself is worthwhile. Knowledge is the root of power, after all. So that was my favorite quote for the month, and that was from that book. Um, and I did enjoy the book, and I'm looking forward to continuing the series. Okay, the next book is the We Are Legion, We Are Bob, the first book in the Bob verse by Dennis Taylor. Uh, this is a science fiction about a guy who... He decides he's going to cryogenically freeze his head and afterward takes out all his money and decides he's going to just live freely for the rest of his life and then he gets ran over and killed. He wakes up and now he's an artificial intelligence. They put his intelligence in a spaceship and send him off to find habitable life. And he ends up like building more ships of himself and cloning himself so there's just lots of bobs and he... I guess he talks to himself because it's all Bob. And I just had a lot of fun with it. Um, I laughed. I thought it was I thought it was a great great story and, and I'm gonna continue this series as well. Okay. Uh, next is a book called My Sister's Grave by Robert Dugani. And so overall this book was just okay. Uh, the mystery in it wasn't that great or anything like that, but what I really got out of it and what I liked about it was that it highlighted this idea that the secrets that we keep from people in order to protect them sometimes cause way more problems than they should. 
and you know I can't say how many times that I hear people say well I, I didn't tell her because uh, I didn't want to hurt her or I didn't want to hurt him um, and I think it's like really common you see it in movies you see it in um, I see it in real life in my work and stuff people will say like hey I didn't want to talk about it I didn't want to hurt their feelings so I just decided I wasn't going to say anything to protect them and I liked how this book took that idea and so much, so many problems would have been avoided if they had just told the main character the truth. Uh, the next book I want to highlight was is called Fred and Rose. This is by Howard Scones. This was probably the most disgusting book I've read this month. Um, it has trigger warnings for just about everything like torture, uh, abuse, child abuse. It was gross. And uh, the, the sad part is that it was based on, a, on actual people or it's a true crime story about a husband and wife who go around taking women and killing, torturing them and killing them. It was horrible. Okay, the next one is The Legend of the Kestrel by Peter Walsh. This was probably the most forgettable book that I read this month. It was so forgettable that I put it on this list. So this was a fantasy series. So for the first part of the book, it was actually okay. Uh, they had some good buildup. They had some uh, things that were going on. Then I was kind of a little bit invested. And then the ending completely was, it just fell flat. Like the whole buildup for the whole book ended up, it was just over and there was no satisfaction whatsoever. I don't intend to continue this series. I just, the ending just made it not worthwhile to for me to continue. Okay, uh, the last book I want to highlight is *The Body Never Lies* by Alice Miller. I don't know that I would recommend this book for anyone. This, so I, this was one of my my professional reading books this month that I read at work, and I guess if you want to hate your parents and feel okay about that you might get something out of this book. And I'm not saying that it was completely worthless because it was and it had some good ideas in it. It's just, I think I've heard other people do these, say these things better or present them better. So um, I really wouldn't recommend somebody just to pick this up unless you were working with a therapist and they said like, hey, you could pick this up uh, because of the way that you feel about your parents. Um, I would be very hesitant to advise anyone to pick it up in any other circumstance. Okay, so that's the highlights of the books that I read in January. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the books that I read that I read that I didn't talk about, feel free to make a comment and I'll tell you about them. Um, otherwise, thanks for sticking with us and please like and subscribe.